Hi everyone, uh, and welcome to English 354 if you're an undergrad and 554 if you're a graduate student. In either case, this is the global short story, and as the title suggests, we will be uh, reading short fiction from authors across the globe, going back a century and a half to writers like Hawthorne and Poe, all the way up to present day. And again, the idea behind this course is to give you some exposure, not only to the genre called short fiction or the short story, but also by doing that, also exposure to some of the greatest authors the world has known. Authors from all across the world, from South America, from Europe, of course, from the United States, from East and West Africa, and other parts of the globe as well. I've tried to be as inclusive as possible to give you a, a sense of what authors have been doing with this form, with this genre, um, again, over the last century, century and a half since it was first uh, started, essentially. Now, it's called short fiction, um, and indeed, some of the stories are quite short, a page, um, but others are much, much longer than that, and it might, the purpose in telling you that is really just be aware of what it is that you've been assigned for the week, go through and take a look at each of the stories at the beginning of each week, because some are gonna be much longer, and I just want you to be aware of that as you decide how you wanna manage your time. Now, I'm gonna be very brief here, because I think I've noticed that many of the people on the roster have had me from in class before, and if you have, then you've used Blackboard with me before, and you're probably familiar with how I set it up. Um, but for those of you who haven't, or for those of you who have, and just we're gonna have a refresher, there are a couple of things I wanna go over, and I'll be very quick about it before I get into the course assignments. Now, the most important thing is that you are on what's called the announcements page, and every time you enter the class, this is the page that you will land on. Now this week, I've given you a welcome announcement, which basically explains what I'm about to talk about, the various links and how Blackboard works. But the important thing to, to note, and what you will see each subsequent week, is gonna be this, a checklist of assignments. Now there is a course syllabus, and that's gonna be posted to course documents, I'll show you that in a minute. And the syllabus is useful for seeing the major course assignments, how much they're worth, when they're going to be due. But this weekly checklist is all you need each week to know what it is I'm expecting from you for the next seven days. So every week there's going to be a new checklist, and if it's not on this checklist, you don't have to do it. So again, that's the most important thing I can tell you is that although there is a syllabus, Everything I require from you will be presented to you in a weekly checklist for the next six weeks. So please remember that, and then when you come into the announcements page, although there's this welcome announcement today, every week it will be the new uh, checklist of assignments that I will be posting, and that will be on the top, okay? So that's the, when you come into announcements, the most important thing is that you'll get that weekly checklist of assignments. For faculty information, that's me. Um, this just tells you how to get in touch with me, and although it lists a phone number, um, I want to emphasize that I am um, email, email. So I do have voicemail, I just don't check it very often. Email I check very often. And for the next six weeks, it's going to be a 24-hour rule. If you write something to me, an email, you should expect a response within 24 hours. If you don't get that response, assume that something went wrong somewhere and that I didn't get it and therefore you should resend. But about 24 hours um, is what I'm going to hold myself to for the next six weeks. Um, because we don't see each other often, I think it's especially important that we keep the lines of communication open. The two most important links over here, however, are going to be course documents. Okay, I'm going to click on that now. This has the course documents. Um, most important is, is it has the syllabus for everybody in the class. Most of you who are taking this as undergrads, will this will be the syllabus you want for English 354. Um, but for those of you who are in the MLA program, um, your syllabus, which is different, is for English 554. Then, and I'm going to talk about these in a, in a short video after this, there are basically three main assignments for the course. Yes, every week you will have discussion board responses, and those are significant. But when we're talking about additional assignments, major assignments, there are three. There's the short analysis, something called becoming the author, and then your final research essay. And I will get to these three, as well as how to schedule them in a minute. But th this is, they're all posted here to course documents. And then of course, the last thing you should note is that the readings themselves 
are all being provided to you in course documents. I've made them all available already. Most of them are PDFs. Some of them are in Word documents, but almost all of them are PDFs. So there are no books for you to buy. There's nothing you don't that you need that you won't have already. The only thing I do ask is that you print out copies of these stories. You should just trust me that your experience of reading them and also being able to take notes on them um, is significantly better if you have hard copies. So I haven't asked you to buy anything, but I am asking you to print out the stories. And those are gonna be available week to week um, in these folders, all in course documents. Assignments, I'm not gonna go there, but really that weekly checklist, well, older ones I just archive there. So if you're in week three and you wanna see what the checklist was from the previous weeks, you can just go there. That's what assignments will be and that's all it is. The other most important link over here is gonna be the discussion board. You click on that, yours will not look like this. Yours will look far more simplified. Um, but essentially, this is where every week you will have one to two responses that are due. And there are a couple of things I wanna say about this. Uh, first, if I post a deadline, say I, I, I write in the, in the checklist, this is due by May 21st. That means until, that you have until 11.59 p.m. on May 21st to post that discussion board item. If it is later than that, if it's even a minute late, you will get a zero on it. And the purpose of that is not, I'm not trying to be tough here, it's simply that it's a slippery slope if you put, if you put yourself in my position, right? If I start taking ones that are a minute late and then five minutes late, then 10 minutes late, where's the line? I need to make sure I'm using the same rules for everybody. And I am giving you an entire week. So if you wait until that last second and you miss the deadline, that's on you. Um, but I am giving you the entire week and you can post them anytime that you want before the deadline, of course, okay? The good thing is that if you post them on time and following the instructions, sometimes the instructions will say you need to post, it has to be at least 150 words, or the instructions might say it has to be 150 words and please quote the text that you're analyzing um, at least once. If you follow those rules and you post on time, you will get 100 on these. I'm not going to grade them A, B, C. I'm not going to deduct points for spelling mistakes unless they're ridiculous um, and pervasive. But the point is, is that the discussion board, if you do it on time and according to the rules, that is a good way to bring your grade up because you'll be getting 100 on all of those assignments. Okay. Now, there are additional links over here, and I'm not going to click, up, click on any more of them, partly because if I click on groups, I haven't decided if I'm going to put you into groups yet. Um, but if I do, that will just be in order to make the class more manageable. Right now there are about 25 people in this Blackboard section, and so sometimes if I break you into groups and give you discussion board items just at the group level, it becomes easier to do. Or if we ever do any peer review exercises, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that. But it's much easier to do that with four or five people in a smaller group rather than the entire class of 25. Um, these other links are pretty self-explanatory. The last one I will uh, point out is Grade Center. I, I do plan on recording your grades for the class in the grade book. Um, it might take me a week or so to, to keep up, so please don't email me a day after something was submitted to ask where the grade is. But I do plan to post all grades to the grade book. Um, that is A, so you can see how you're doing in the class, and B, if you see any mistakes, you can uh, bring them to my attention and I can fix them. That way by the end of the semester um, there are no mistakes and your grade is accurate. So this is a, this is a very quick uh, uh, overview of how the Blackboard course is set up. What I'm going to do now is uh, you, I'm gonna, you're, you're going to see another even shorter video I think that's going to explain those three major assignments and then I'll give you one very brief video that explains the scheduling to make sure that you understand when things are due and how to sign up for um, the major assignments. So this is the Blackboard class. Um, I look forward to um, working with you this semester. Obviously, if you have any additional questions about this, feel free to reach out to me via email. Okay.